Wake up, Maggie. I think I've got something to say to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's our intro. How cute. <laughs> Killing it. What's up, y'all? It's just two chicks in a pod. Back, Back to the regal, regular old programming. Back down to two chicks. Um, yeah, that was quite the whirlwind of episodes that we, we gave you. Yeah. So just take a moment to let that all settle in. Yeah. Um, if anybody has questions or comments or concerns, we'd be happy to answer them. Just comment somewhere we'll get it (laughs) we always do so so yeah um so yeah we had a good weekend uh we went out (laughs) yeah we went out um we went to uh name that tune i keep calling it open (laughs) i know i kept calling it open mic to people too because that's the only thing i go to but no it's name that tune name that tune. name that tune yeah and that was a lot of fun got to dance a little bit it was sad that they like shut her down at one but i think they have to shut everything down at one right now i was yeah like that night i was like oh you know why is it so early but yeah because of the restrictions and stuff yeah. everything closes early which because you know one more hour really yeah one, one more hour and the rona would have been out it would have been like <laughs> it used to be 11 and now yeah. it's one o'clock i just i just can't get over how beautiful it was to be to feel like it, we were having a normal night. Yeah. Like a normal fucking night. A normal night. Just people getting riled up and, and dancing and yelling and drinking and shots. And yeah. it, was, it was good. It was a good time. Yeah, it was a good time. It was, yeah, it was nice just to feel normal again for mm-hmm. a little bit, for an evening, a night out. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Yeah. it also made me appreciate like, not going out because I was a little overwhelmed with like like yeah. when I got home I could not sleep because I was just like that was an overload of like everything like yeah <laughs> I well. saw so many people I talked so much I danced and it was just like you almost had to like whew, like relax. even like the next morning like the next day like I I had I had some drinks um but I wasn't hung over anything I drank a lot of water mm-hmm. again I've been on that Drink more water than alcohol. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> Smart. Yeah. Doing it the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but like, I was just exhausted the next day just from like being out and being around yeah. that much energy and that that many different people and stuff. It was just like, oh. Mm-hmm. So. Sounds good though. Yeah, it was really good. It was lots of fun. We went out to Lashburn before and got ready out there. I just, yeah, those girls are so fun, by the way. Mm-hmm. I really like those girls. Um, I put we we managed to get our logo on one pop socket, but that was yeah, it. <laughs> yeah. We so yeah. we'll strike again here. Yeah, if you yeah, careful with your pop socket around us. Yeah, <laughs> I mean if it looks like a nice one, I won't fuck with it. But if it's faded and scratched off already, your mom be your mind. <laughs> and I just I just have to say this, it's really funny when you see so this event like nobody was really wearing masks and a lot of people weren't like vaccinated and it was it was cool um but it's fucking hilarious when you see people who like are super against are super like nazis about that kind of stuff and then you see them at an event like that participating in non-compliance and then (laughs) those same people are on facebook like wear a mask like what bro yeah. What? I fuck, you seem I just, to really be in, have been enjoying your maskless fucking night. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, bro? I mean, I don't know if those people are going to see this, but they, they know who the fuck they are. What's up? I was like, they're either hypocrites or they're rats. There's one of the two, and seems like a little bit of hypocrite. So, a lot of hypocrite, but... A little hip- hypocrisy. But whatever. Moving on. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, we wanted to talk about something a little bit serious. Serious. <laughs> well, it's serious to me because I take it serious, but yeah. Um, Very serious. Um, yeah, let's just talk about like... Well, tell them what happened this morning, like what you saw. So, <laughs> this morning I see a picture. So, there's a giveaway happening right now. I'm not going to say any names. I'm not trying to single anybody out, but it's just more of a... 
It's a trigger. A PSA, yeah. it's, a, it's a trigger, and, it, and we want to send out a PSA that, like, taking pictures of little girls in sports bras, like, and I'm talking, like, six, seven, yeah. five, like, that age range, and posting them onto social media is not all right. It's not cool. You would not, like, if a woman, like, if I posted a picture of myself in a sports bra and a pair of jeans and post with Amanda, you know, it would be sexualized. Um, you wouldn't do that with a teen. That would be inappropriate. So why do we think it's appropriate to post pictures of little girls shirtless, essentially, with a little sports bra on? Like, we, normal humans, don't look at that picture and see, and, and think, oh, that's a sexual picture. No, normal human beings would just look at it and scroll by. But the problem is it's not all normal people on the internet and you're literally giving the pedophiles exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. You're literally putting it on their lap. And like I just think it's crazy because so companies like Children's Place and Urban Planet and um, Oshkosh, you go to their websites and you look up little girls sports bras and they're only allowed to show you the product itself. They're not allowed to have little girl models modeling Calvin Klein sports bras. That's like not okay. And and those companies know that and so they they don't do that. And so it's fucking boggles the mind when I see just a regular like person post a photo of yeah, little girls looking like cute, you know, in sports bras, looking all pouty like little Ugh. Well, and, like, Calvin Klein, too, like, in itself has been, like... Sexualized. Sexualized. Yeah. Like, you Justin know... Justin Bieber The sexy like, Calvin yeah. Klein underwear and stuff. Not saying that, like, that's that was the intent. Like, I understand that, like, innocent, normal people would not think that. Right. But, like, man, we're... S- like, people are so naive to the fact that, oh, you know, that wouldn't happen to my kids. Like, the fucking... The predators are in our backyard. Like, they're everywhere. You know, you're not fucking safe from them. And, like, they're even, like, around this small little city that we're in. There's uh, there's tons, tons, of, tons them. of them. Creep Catchers was only going on for, what, two, three, four months actively in Lloydminster? And how many fucking Creep Catcher videos yeah. were there? Like, So we just need to be smarter and do due diligence and protect the children. And, like, the first step is not posting inappropriate pictures of them on the yeah. internet thinking it's cute. Because what we think is cute is literally somebody's fucking sex fetish, which is disgusting. Yeah. And and not only that, but, like, those children did not consent to that. Like, that nobody, as well. re- nobody really thinks about, like, I know that... Everybody just posts their kid online and and whatever and whatever. First day of school, blah, blah. But to post your kid in their underwear? Yeah. Like, a few years ago, there was a big hubbubaloo about... I can't believe I just said hubbubaloo. (laughs) Whatever the fuck that word (laughs) is. But hullabaloo. (laughs) There was a big fucking, you know... Ta-da. Thing about... To-do. Yeah. (laughs) Ta-da. About, um, hey, stop posting your naked baby online Mm -hmm. because... One, your baby, like we're in the era where our children are be are old enough and smart enough to have Facebook if you let them. And like, do you really think that children want to their friends to be able to go to their grandma or mom's, um, you know, profile and find a naked picture of like that kid? And like, you know what I mean? I don't know. I just, I just don't think it's okay to post like. If their outfit and Christmas and whatever is cool, but naked and underwear pics of children, like, that's their body. And they probably don't fucking want to share it with the whole world. Like, I'm an adult. I do that. That's my choice. I suffer the consequences of that. But the child does not know. And the one thing I do really want people to know about is... There are websites that will crawl Instagram. And what crawling means is, so like you'll, you'll have a crawler and you set up this bot crawler and it'll crawl Instagram for young looking photos or, or green shoes or whatever. It'll pick up things. So when you have a bot crawler crawling on Instagram, uh, collecting photos of young girls, and then you go to this, um, I don't even want to say the name of it, but there's a website that is just they turn pictures of little kids into porn pictures legit they put filters 
and they put makeup on your kid. They, it's fucked. And the only reason I know about it is because, oops, 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 oops. <laughs> when I was kind of like really diving into like the child trafficking and the, and stuff like that, um, I came across it and I, and I found this whole like, a uh, Facebook group of mothers who were like fighting against um, sexual, like people sexualizing their children's images. Like sometimes they'll Photoshop your kid's face onto a porn body. Sometimes they'll just take the picture of your naked kid and just, you know what I mean? Like it's just gross what they do. I barely even want to say like it's it's that gross and. And people just don't take that into consideration. They just, or take it serious. Yeah, enough. or they think it's a joke and they think, ah, mm, I'll do what I want. But like, mm, you know? And like there's even people who like will pose like like naked with their kids or something. Like remember oh. when Chrissy Teigen did that? That was so fucking gross. Yeah, I don't know. Like you should not like, like I guess you shouldn't be like ashamed of your body with your kid but like posing and taking pictures na- like that's just weird it's just weird it's teaching <laughs> your kid to take naked photos of themselves and i know that like pff, you know i'm who i am but like do i ever do that in front of my kid never like i don't know that's a slippery slope for me but <laughs> <laughs> but like for her she doesn't want to be on the internet every once in a while i'll take a funny like instagram video of her and and then we'll i'll show it to her and she'll say oh that's funny whatever but for the most part i don't like to take pictures of her and post it without her knowing because i don't know she's becoming her own person and why would she i don't know why would she need an internet presence unless she wanted it right so, well, I think I, everybody could probably agree that it's like the, the internet is such a, like, it's such a great networking it's device, but it's also just terrible for society. Mm-hmm. So, like, I don't know. Is it really that great for marketing? Like, is the pay, if the yeah. reward worth the, worth the, well, when the you risk look, of being on there? When you look at the fact that, like, 90% of businesses, like, their internet lead sell ratio is, like, 12%. Like, 12% is good. If you get 12%, if you sell 12% of your internet leads, you're fucking killing it. Which is sad, because then you think, like, 88% of the internet leads you get are... A waste of your fucking time <laughs> so well it's easy for people you know to inquire without actually having to be committed yeah. to anything or feel like they need to be committed to anything but also though like the more we market online the less people interaction between actual human beings there are as well exactly. so you're actually kind of like taking jobs away because soon enough it's just going to be one person running internet sales across the fucking board yeah and i don't know about you but there's certain things that like i don't want to fucking buy on the internet i do like like no. shoes cl- even well that's just it me. too like people even like even that in itself like people are getting lazy they don't go to stores anymore mm-hmm. and like that in itself like it's important to get out of the house it's important to like interact with strangers and like we're all gonna like the next generation we're all gonna be like hermits not knowing how to like interact with one another Mm -hmm. you know it'll be like i just like imagine like people like going to their door to grab like their amazon packages and next thing you know they catch eye contact with the fucking person across the hall it's like (laughs) grab their parcel and back to the apartment thing that's literally where we're at bro (laughs) it feels like that's where we're heading where people will just like uh, yeah humans or like in the walking dead it'll be like the walking dead where you see a living being and you're like "Mm, that person might kill me like oh and that's like almost like what it feels like now with like everything happening well yeah like the people are scared to like breathe fresh air i'm a ticking time bomb people fucking come run up on me but I just don't understand, like, how people will, like, understand the science of a vaccine. I'll just saying it like this because they'll be like, yeah, I trust the science of a vaccine, but I don't trust the science of an immune system, especially after one has already had COVID. Like, yeah, yeah, right. Like what? 
Yeah, like, and, and... And the fact of the matter is, is we don't know how long the immunity lasts in a vaccine, and we don't know how long the immunity lasts in fucking natural immunity, so, like, what the fuck does it matter? Why can't we just... Why can't we just use it like one? a fucking... Yeah. Yeah, like, I already had it. I was fine. Exactly. You had it. You were fine. Yeah, we're both... We're both... As far as I'm concerned, we're both vaccinated. But, like... COVID has really, like, and and this is why I fully believe, it's like COVID gave the government a reason to, like, lock everybody down and, and um, you know, control everybody. Like, as like yes, it's a virus, and yes, whatever, but it, it's, it's all about control. And if you don't realize that yet, like, realize it, but... And I think, like, the hospitalizations <laughs> and stuff are starting to go down because probably, I'm hoping, herd immunity now. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, I really hope that it just, you know, I don't know. I really hope that that's where it's heading and that the numbers just keep declining. Yeah. And Because, um, yeah, the whole reason I said that is because, like, we're all hermits now. And we're all, we're all almost incentivized mm-hmm. to shop online. And, like, Todd Ness just posted that fucking video <laughs> about how <laughs> Skip the Dishes was the economy of 2020. And yeah. he's 100% right. Like... That company made hand over money hand over fist because we were all too like we didn't know like early on in the pand- pandemic so we were all using Skip all the time because it was like somehow this delivery driver who I've never met in my life is safer than me going directly to the place like what were we thinking we've been <gasps> hoodwinked <laughs> uh, we have been hoodwinked and so yeah I really I really just I don't know I just yeah I it's like yeah. <laughs> Pray that the hospitalizations keep dropping mm-hmm. and that it just turns into what it needs to turn into and we go back to normal, but I yeah. Don't know. Um, and that's like and that's another thing too that I wanted to say, like that is frustrating. There's the cats already fucking with the tree. Mm-hmm. Um can't have nothing nice. This is why we can't have nice things, cats. <laughs> um is what I don't agree with is that they're lumping the age 12 to 5 year olds or less in with the unvaccinated to increase the unvaccinated numbers. Mm-hmm. But like that really frustrates me because yeah. now and now they're really pushing for those kids to get vaccinated and like That's why? Gross. Why exactly? None have died and the ones that have died, you know, were severely you know, immune. A like, sniffle could have killed them no matter what. And I, that might sound insensitive, but, like, that's the reality. Well, if you have terminal cancer, like, that's just, like... Yeah, like, that one kid that... Or somebody died of... They are like... They, they had been suffering from a brain tumor for 10 months. And then two days before they died, they tested them for COVID and it was positive. But then the family had to come out and be like, Yo, he didn't die of COVID. He died of this brain tumor he's been fighting for 10 months. Like, yeah. Yikes. It's frustrating. I've just been but, living in my own little bubble and <laughs> praying. <I've, laughs> there's been, yeah, me too. I've been doing that a lot. But um, there's, there was a, a guy who gave a really good, concise, like, thing about all, everything. And the thing that stood out the most to me was the fact that if you have COVID, and you died within 28 days later, um, it's a COVID death. No matter if you get hit by a bus on day 10 or freaking, you know, get shot on day 12, you die of COVID. Or where, if you're diagnosed with has, COVID the previous month, it's even on the Saskatchewan, the government yeah. website. If you are diagnosed with COVID in, say, October, and you ended up dying in November, it just gets put on the daily total the day or like the daily tally and not actually reported why <laughs> that doesn't make any <laughs> sense i think i but, fucked up saying that but no and so and then so anyway covid within 28 days that's a covid death but if you get vaccinated and die the next day from a heart attack or three days later from a stroke or five days later from myocarditis or seven days later from guillain Bar syndrome or any of the other illnesses listed from I the vaccine said. if you die from that it's not counted as a as an injection death so like that's not really fair i don't think they're way underrepresenting the vaccination injuries and that's pretty fucking scary Especially for someone like me. So, leave me alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I just want to be left alone. That's yeah. all. Like, just let me live my life. Okay, correct your mistake before this episode's over. Uh, <laughs> no, it was so. It's breakthrough cases. So COVID-19 vaccinations and breakthrough infections. The breakthrough analysis for each month is based on cases that we report in that month. The hospitalization, ICU, and death data included in the analysis are for those cases. So for example, if a case who was reported in September died in October, that death would not be included in the October cases breakthrough analysis. However, it has been accounted for in the daily dashboard posted online. Sneaky. So that they don't have to disclose all the breakthrough. Very sneaky. I don't know. I guess you could take that as for what you want. Um, I just read it and was like, hmm. Even, yeah. Even though, like, yeah. And I'm just not going to get into it. Okay. (laughs) And with that, have a great rest of your forever. Bye. Goodbye.